prepared to bask in glory. I don't think there's gonna be any basking today, buddy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the worst performing video games of 2024, no matter how good or bad their reviews were. Ah, oh, rats. Well, it was worth a shot. Number 10, Tales of Kanzara, Zhao. It hurts to put a game like Tales of Kanzara on a list like this. It was clearly made with a lot of heart and explores Bantu culture and mythology, something rarely seen in video games. That, of course, just makes its failure harder to swallow. As a Metroidvania, it was already launching in a crowded genre in the indie game space, yet still gained decent reviews. Even at a lower price point, it didn't reach the sales numbers that developer Surgeon Studios was hoping for. Just three months after launch, news broke that a little over a dozen employees were being laid off. Considering the studio's LinkedIn page listed 11 to 50 employees prior, that's a sizable chunk. Number 9, Senua Saga, Hellblade 2. Watch out! This attack is too strong. You need to assess it. He is stronger than you. 2017's Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice was a huge leap forward in video game visuals and sound design. It earned plenty of awards and a sequel was announced in 2019. By that point, developer Ninja Theory had been acquired by Microsoft, making the sequel exclusive to the Xbox Series X and S. Its budget and manpower were significantly increased, but by the time it was finally released, not many seemed to care. You need to help them. Someone needs your help. Everyone is dead in there. Everyone. Let's go. Listen to yourself. The exclusivity to one of Microsoft's weakest performing consoles didn't help, nor did its 7 to 8 hour playtime at a $50 price tag. According to Circana, an analytics firm in the US, it only reached 21st in sales on Xbox consoles the month it was released. That same month on Game Pass, it only ranked 12th in overall player count. <laughs> Number 8, Dustborn. Please don't walk into Road. Set in an alternate reality US in 2030, Dustborn follows a band touring the country, with the lead character Pax able to turn her words into attacks. It only garnered middling reviews from most outlets, who felt combat grew tiring and that there wasn't enough story to fill the full playtime. While sales numbers have been made available, it had an abysmal launch on Steam, where it peaked at 83 concurrent players. We're nothing like, yeah, we're nothing like you. For a $30 game, that is shockingly low. It's worth noting that its performance was also affected by players who didn't care for its extremely left-leaning politics, and developer Red Thread Games reportedly received a ton of online harassment for it. Regardless of political views though, Dustborn has been anything but a hit. The open road awaits. Time to head out. Go ahead. I'll be right behind you. Number 7. Alone in the Dark I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh yeah? How much you paying you? $150. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth of that. Once a major player in the creation of the survival horror genre, Alone in the Dark has failed to come back several times. Those hoping the latest attempt would breathe life back into it were sadly mistaken. Released in March of 2024, it was a remake of the original starring David Harbour and Jodie Comer, investigating a missing person case before descending into an eldritch nightmare. Yeah. Although its atmosphere was delectably dark, just about everything else received mixed reception from critics. Apparently, sales were even worse. It sold poorly in the eyes of publisher THQ Nordic's parent company, Embracer Group. And in June of 2024, those poor sales led to the closure of developer Pieces Interactive. My weapon broke. Number 6, Star Wars Outlaws. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I uh, I thought you were one of them. Huh? Ubisoft has been on a downward spiral over the last few years, one that even the Star Wars brand couldn't help with. Released in late August, Outlaws scored in the mid-70s across all platforms, with a lot of gameplay elements deemed decent but dated. However, player reactions have been far lower and sales have been slow. Hey, get her! Are you kidding? 
This has caused JP Morgan to cut its projected sales numbers through March of 2025 by 2 million, which in turn caused Ubisoft's share price to drop to its lowest point in 10 years. It clearly isn't the big hit Ubisoft was predicting, as Outlaws also received the biggest marketing campaign in the company's history. Ugh. What a waste of time! Number 5. Foam Stars In February of 2024, ToyLogic and Square Enix brought us a Splatoon-like multiplayer game called Foam Stars. And almost immediately afterwards, nearly everyone forgot about it. While the game wasn't terrible, it was a pretty shallow experience that failed to stand on its own. Although it was free for PS Plus subscribers at launch, the player count had dropped by an astounding 95% just two months after launch. The fact that Helldivers 2 launched around the same time certainly hurt its chances. The game has continued to receive content updates, but that has still failed to bring more players in, with Foam Stars moving to a free-to-play model in October of 2024. This isn't looking good. Number 4. Borderlands <laughs> We know it's a movie based on a video game rather than a video game itself, but the failure of Borderlands is simply too big to ignore. From the very first casting choice, fans seemed to be against it. Reshoots and trailers didn't seem promising, but then the movie was released and everyone's worst fears were confirmed. But you can call me... Whoopsie! <laughs> you accidentally shot me in the face again. As I was saying, you At 10% on Rotten Tomatoes, it was slammed for nearly every aspect, with some even referring to it as worse than the live-action Super Mario Bros. movie from the 90s. It wasn't only a critical bomb, but a financial one. With an estimated budget of 110 to 120 million, it only brought in 31 million worldwide. What? I'm expelling the excess lead! Number 3. Skull and Bones Another Ubisoft bomb, Skull & Bones spent 10 years in development and released to little fanfare. Inspired by the ship battles of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, it reportedly cost $200 million to make across the decade-long period. Other than arriving far too late, there are multiple features players simply weren't interested in. The $70 price tag, the live service elements, the fact that it was less of a game than what inspired it, and that Ubisoft referred to it as a quadruple-A game all played a part. It has since gone on to receive huge discounts across physical and digital stores. Ubisoft hasn't revealed sales numbers, but they cannot be good. Fire! <laughs> Number 2. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League A team-based Suicide Squad game from the studio behind the Arkham series should have been a resounding success. However, a mountain of live service elements no one wanted ensured that it wasn't. Before release, many players could tell Warner Brothers was attempting to chase trends. Keep it together, Shark. Shark, are you crying? I have a complicated relationship with my father. Join the club, man. Gameplay was monotonous and bland, and both the reviews and sales reflected that. While Warner Brothers never revealed how many copies were sold, it did state the game had led to a $200 million loss for the company. Even worse, developer Rocksteady was also hit with layoffs, with the performance of Kill the Justice League cited as the direct cause. Weapons free, boys. He's standing right there. Yeah, and he's a big giant demon. No, fear the Batman. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Concord Nothing wrong with some friendly competition. <laughs> Crush them. If you've kept up on news of Concord, you're probably not surprised to find it in the number one spot. The first-person hero shooter spent around eight years in development. That means, by the time it was released, everything about it was outdated in comparison to other games in its genre, many of which are free to play. Gotta fall back for some healing. Worse than being outdated, Concord only gathered a minuscule player base while reviews noted that nothing about it stood out, or was even that good. 
Although developer Firewalk Studios planned to support it through free updates with new characters and maps, it wasn't given the chance to. The player count was so low that Sony took it offline only two weeks after release, and all players were given refunds. This right here, best crew in the galaxy. No contest. Know any other video games that bombed in 2024? Share your thoughts in the comments. What the hell is going on? Where am I? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.